Hey, this is Oliver Luck, and you're listening to the XFL Extra Point Podcast. Since the day you saved my soul, you've been proving this is the XFL. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Justin. I'm here with the XFL Extra Point. It's Extra Point number 12. I'm here with Thomas. Thomas, say something so people know you exist. Wow, look, listen to this crazy, out-of-this-world thing I'm saying. Wow, I'm so zany, wow. You know, that's better than last week. <laughs> well, it's hello. better than hello. Well, hello. <laughs> I'm just greeting people into the show, you know? Just let them know that they're welcome. All right, Thomas, I meant to point this out before the show, but I'm pointing yes. it out on the show. All right. <laughs> Make sure you're not, like, getting in a full-body exercise during the show this week like you were last week or whatever. I'll have you know that my dog... <laughs> <laughs> really wanted my attention and I was trying to give him a bone while also doing the show because I'm a professional mm-hmm. um, so that, that's what was going on gotcha okay well let's uh, hope for no audio problems this week yes uh, so as usual XFL Extra Point make sure you guys head over tw- to Twitter follow us there at XFL Extra Point there do it uh, we're on YouTube we're on Apple Podcasts we're on everything you get your podcasts on Whatever those services are, follow, like, subscribe, all that shit. Whatever you do, that's like interactive because that helps us. Yes. Right? So, um, so if you guys want to ask questions on the show, we, we plug this every week, and it uh, it never happens. If you guys want to ask questions on the show, <laughs> you know you can DM us on Twitter at XFL Extra Point, or you can email us over on Extra Point Contact at Gmail dot com. So let me check that on the show right now. Let's do it. Let's let's look at the empty. Let's look. Maybe there will be something. I don't know. I'm just getting a lot of shit from YouTube. Nice. That's another thing to mention. We had our vlog go up concurrent with our podcast last week. Yes, we did. And it's doing quite well. Well, it's doing fantastic, so thank you. We're up over 2,000 views on that video. Something like 70 likes or something like that. Three downvotes, so fuck you guys. Yeah, what the hell? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't know who downloaded our shit. That bullshit. But, uh, <laughs> but thanks for guys for supporting that. We're gonna have more video content coming to you guys soon, so make sure you subscribe. We went up a lot in subscribers too on there, so that's great. We're gonna have more shit coming out. We're planning it now. It's gonna be fantastic. It won't be very similar to that vlog, sadly, because there's not another open practice. But it'll be more video content. So, yes. Anyway, today we're gonna do news and notes. Yes. Per usual. Yes. And then today we're going to do something a little bit different. Something our show isn't centered around. No. We're going to do a fantasy rankings. Yeah. So how about that, huh? That's what we finna uh, we do. We took the top five from every position group. As we talked about when we talked about the DraftKings thing, we love fantasy football. Or at least we love to hate fantasy football. Mm-hmm. We play fantasy football. So I think we have a pretty good idea how it works. XFL is a little bit different, though, so... It was challenging. Was it challenging for you to put this together? Uh, yeah, just because a lot of the players I don't know, and mm-hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, it was. <laughs> and, and the and the other thing is like we have no clue, like really what the depth charts look like at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll get into that when we get into our fantasy rankings. Uh, am I forgetting anything? Did I plug everything? Did I say what we're doing? I think we're good. All right. So let's do the news and notes drop. Boom. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Alright, first story. Holy shit, Thomas. Holy shit, Justin. Big news. Big drops news. Right shit. before the show. Not right before, like a couple hours. Yeah, so I got a little time before. to prepare. But I didn't write anything, so we're going off the cuff here. That's fine. Luis Perez. This is unofficial, by the way. Luis Perez traded from the Wildcats to the Guardians for a guy named Chad Kanoff from the Guardians to the Wildcats. So... Mm-hmm. Huge trade, I think. Mm-hmm. We kind of saw this coming. Maybe we didn't see the trade coming, but it makes sense. Luis Perez was the guy, and then Josh Johnson came in, and he was no longer the guy. And I, I personally think Luis Perez, starting caliber dude, like maybe. What did I, I ranked him either a second and third on mm-hmm. my QB list? What did you Correct. rank? Do you remember it all? It was I ranked him pretty was high. It, I like Luis. A yeah, lot. we were, we were both pretty high on him. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, he was one of our top quarterbacks in the XFL, and yep. he is no longer on that team. Um, I guess the big question is like, what's his role in New York with Matt McGloin there? What are you thinking? Uh, probably a young backup slash starter. Should McGloin ass it up or get hurt? Right. Um. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to – I don't know if he'll beat out McGloin in camp just because McGloin has kind of already been cemented there. Right, yeah, um, he's more familiar with the offense. Yes, but I think he has an outside shot to end up being the starter for uh, the Guardians by the end of the season. Yeah, if, it, if it's anything like the XFL, I mean the AAF was, mm-hmm. it's like a lot of the quarterbacks, all the quarterbacks find playing time at some point during the season. Yeah. It's like, rarely did we see, you know, I didn't watch a ton of AF and the season didn't finish. We just see one quarterback do the whole thing. It was like changing game to game. I have a feeling at some point during the season, we're going to see Luis Perez uh, start. You know, so I, I tweeted, I was tweeting about this when this happened. Yes. And I was seeing a lot of people kind of not as high on Luis Perez as I thought people were, mm-hmm. you know, like. I think he's very talented. I thought he was one of the top three. I think Josh Johnson's better than him. Yes. I do. He's got more experience. He's been a shit ton of time in the NFL, starting, backing up, whatever. Mm -hmm. He's played a lot more than Luis Perez has. Yes. But that doesn't mean Luis Perez isn't good. I think there's teams out there, I don't know if the Guardians were one of them, that really could have used him. Um. I know people might say the Vipers, but I don't think that works because I don't know if he fits that kind of scheme. I don't think his accuracy is, you know, game managery. Uh, how I how I rem- I remember when I was explaining Luis Perez, I was saying he was sort of a really like discount Aaron Rodgers, except not an asshole. Yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> he is that play type. But yeah. <laughs> So I would, but he could have fit. He could have fit with a team like Seattle, who I'm mm-hmm. not a huge fan of their uh, quarterback room they have going on there. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so Seattle could have worked. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to think. Is there any other team? Maybe St. Louis, too. Uh, watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> I know you love Jordan Tomu, but there's people. There's some people out there who's saying that Jordan Tomu might not even start over Taylor Heineke. 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 Well, Heineken. That would be a mistake. Yeah, so we don't even know truly what that quarterback room is going to be. We do not. Um, I think it's pretty split because Heineke has more. Um, he has more experience. That he does. But you think, and I think too, that Tomu has more upside. Correct. But a guy like Luis Perez, who has not maybe as much experience, but he has more experience with, you know, the AAF. Mm. Um, he was like a D2 Heisman winner. Yep. <laughs> so, I, I I think Luis Perez could have came in there and at least held it down for the year while they developed Tamu. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Luis Perez is on the Guardians. Uh, I'm not a fan of this trade, and I I personally this is the point I made on Twitter that kind of got some backlash. Mm-hmm. I personally think the Wildcats are at the losing end of this. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, Josh Johnson's better than Luis Perez. It's true. But I'm not sure how long Josh Johnson's about to be in the XFL. Yes. Uh, he's older. He pr- He's proven he can play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. What's stopping him from going back or retiring? Is he a long-term option? I'm not sure. I think you hold on to a guy like Luis Perez, so farther down the line, you can start Luis Perez, because I don't think Luis Perez is really going anywhere. Was Luis Perez a Tier 1 quarterback? He was a Tier 1 quarterback. That's interesting. That's what I'm saying, and it's weird now. So that means the Guardians have two Tier 1 quarterbacks. And you said this wasn't official? This wasn't official yet. Mm -hmm. I think most people are taking it. Uh, Let's give credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. So, at XFL Chick, Mm -hmm. go follow her. She's great. Um, She broke the story. Uh We haven't heard anything official yet. Mm -hmm. But Well, um, to be perfectly honest... If there's nothing official with this, I kind of don't believe it. Really? Um, now, really? now, really, since I said that, what's going to happen? There's going to be like 10 minutes to the end of the show, and it's going to be, oh, oh, New York Guardians, Trey for blah, blah, blah. So, 
That's going to suck, but... It's uh, official. Los it's Angeles official. Wildcats. Awesome. Best of luck in the Big Apple, Perez Louis. I've spoken into existence. I'd, you see that? I'd now you look like an existence. asshole. Well, fine. <laughs> Fuck me. I'm stupid. Whatever. So shout but, out to XFL. Yeah, chick. shout out to XFL. Chick. You're smarter than me. Good for you. <laughs> Way to break that story. Don't listen to me. I'm retarded. Um, so, God, I spoke into existence. See how powerful I am? I'm so powerful. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right. Well, there's always the possibility... That uh, Luis asked it up in camp, which I don't think happened, but because I think he's good too. But it, there's a possibility. There's a whole multitude of things that could have happened that led to him being traded. Um, or maybe the Guardians were just like, hey, hey, give me Luis. And they were like, no. And they're like, well, we'll give you this dude. Because looking at uh, Kane off, he has the, uh, he's like the prototypical QB size. He's like 6'3, 220. And he's got mm-hmm. hella arm. So maybe that's just more the type of quarterback that the Wildcats would like to go for as a backup right. as opposed to Luis's type, which is not necessarily not those things, but kind of more of an improviser type skill set and right. more in the intermediate game. So maybe that's what's going yeah. on. But One thing I discussed, so you know, I was all over Twitter with this when this broke. Yes. Um, I was talking to our friend Reagan at XFL Down and Under. On ah, Twitter. Reagan. And uh, we were talking, and I said something like, uh, you know, maybe it's just they wanted a quarterback competition. Mm-hmm. Like, And then he pointed out, oh, maybe, you know, Matt McGloin, as you would say, was assing it up in camp. Assing it wasn't up. Wasn't trying too hard. Yeah. Because he knew who's taking his spot, right? He's the tier one guy. You bring in a guy like Luis Perez, you create some competition. Both guys are going to try harder to get that starting job. Mm-hmm. Maybe you get better play out of either McGloin or Luis Perez, and you pick the best of the bunch. Yep. And just see how it goes. But for me, I think realistically what's happening here is you, they're aware that like in the AAF, people get injured, people are inconsistent, and then some games you need to start a different guy. And yep. having Luis Perez there is, they won this trade. I mean, they've got two great quarterbacks. Yeah. And if anything happens to Josh Johnson, I, I don't know enough about Chad Kanoff, mm-hmm. but the fact that I've never heard his name, the fact that I didn't even know he was signed, you know, I don't. That's not necessarily doesn't mean he's great, but it's just very possible that he's just not as good as Luis Perez. There's a reason Luis Perez was a tier one guy. So yes. we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm interested to see now. I'm really interested about what these depth charts are going to look like. Yeah, because um, it's yeah. so up in the air. I don't know if there was per se a winner of the trade yet because I don't think Yeah, really I guess you can't that. say that yet. Yeah, so That's that's true. Another interesting thing before I move on to our next story. Yes. Which was really going to be our first story. Um I'm really curious what the salary cap. Is there a salary cap in the XFL? I suspect not yet, but maybe in the future. I think everyone gets a baseline of pay um this year except for the quarterbacks or the tier one quarterbacks, I should say. And mm-hmm. then that'll probably adjust more because everyone gets, because there's the bonuses for winning too and all that stuff. So you're right, you're right. I think everyone gets kind of a fixed pay this year, probably next year, but maybe in the future, if this thing sticks around, it might be a little more. Uh, are there, are there legit. team owners? I don't know. I don't think so. I think, yeah, I think the I, XFL is just, is just doing all of this. I think the XFL owns everything, which maybe that'll change because yeah. that's a lot of cost to shoulder. But. Mm-hmm. And, and the other problem with that is like, sort of feels like you can make whatever you want to happen happen. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like you're like, wow, the LA team is getting a lot of fans. No, I wish just throw fire. all the good fucking players on them and push well, them for SummerSlam. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe that's what they want, you know? <laughs> maybe... But I hope oh, that's John not how they Cena do is under them. center for the Wildcats. <laughs> John Cena. Uh, Roman uh, Reigns <laughs> under center. The big dog. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's move on to our next story. <laughs> All right. Um, this one might be near and dear to your heart somewhere. It is. I have a lot to say about this, actually. All right. So, ex Browns wide receiver Antonio Callaway has mm-hmm. signed with the Vipers. So. Following a disappointing departure from the Cleveland Browns that Thomas knows that. a lot about. You could say disappointing. Um, the troublesome yet high ceiling wide receiver is now heading to Tampa Bay. He was a fourth round pick out of Florida. He's 23. Um, he's He was a really talented guy coming out of the draft. And he 
apparently, I don't know much about him because I wasn't following him pre-draft. All right. But apparently his his value tanked because of some uh, off-the-field problems. Yes. And his value has tanked since because of more off-the-field problems. I've got a whole mm. list here of everything he did. Yep. Um, I don't know if I want to go through it all. But, you know, marijuana possession. Um, mm-hmm. There was a, what is this? What is this right here? Uh, an alleged rape in 2016. Alleged. Uh, more marijuana stuff. Mm-hmm. Then he was drafted. Then more marijuana stuff. Um, and then 10 game suspension. And then he was waived by the Browns. Yes. So he missed 11 games for suspension. And he only got 89 receiving yards in four games. Yes. So what do you have to say, Thomas? Uh, so coming into this and seeing this story, I was pretty ready to just shit all over Antonio Galloway. Uh, right, okay. and I, and I will for a little bit. Um, okay. I don't really care if you fail a drug test for marijuana, unless you continue to fail a drug test for marijuana. So at that point mm-hmm. you're just stupid. Um, mm-hmm. like, you know, you're going to get tested. You know that this will yeah. pop you. Like, this is dumb. Like, do you want to play football or do you want to play or do you want to smoke weed? Now I understand like, I'm not by any means like a oh, the wacky tobacky Lucifer lettuce yeah. kind of well, person. I guess we'll get that out of the way now. Neither of us are anti-weed guys. I yes. personally think NFL players should be allowed to smoke marijuana in the offseason or in any of their off time because it can help them with their pain. And lots of foreign players have come out and said it's helped them since. Yes. But it's not the rules now. Yes. So if you know so, you're going to get in trouble yes. for it, Follow the damn you rules. don't do it. Um. Yeah, I don't. At the very least, I don't think the NFL should test for it because it's not a performance enhancer. Yeah. Um, right. uh, the Florida stuff where he was suspended is bad because uh, mm-hmm. it was a felony credit card, which means he was stealing people's money. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. I didn't mention that one. The alleged rape stuff, which I know very little about, he was acquitted. Yeah, so I'm, I'm assuming. That. Yeah, I'm assuming it was fine, but whatever. I don't have the information well, on that. Well, it says it says he was cleared after his accuser boycotted the proceedings. Because a Florida booster was picked to run the hearing. Oh, well, see? Don't know the details, so whatever. Um, anyway, so he is one of the draft picks where, in hindsight, it's like, God damn it, John Dorsey, when you see who else was there. Uh, in hindsight, of course. Uh, his potential has been sky high always. Uh, he has the skill set to be a true number one wide receiver in the NFL, and I mean that when I say that. Uh, right. But, yeah, uh, his Browns tenure was bad. Uh, there were players that were cut so that he could stay on the team that I think are would have contributed more than he did. Uh, however, like I said, if he can kind of get his mind right and get onto, uh, I guess, the straight and narrow, I guess, uh, then mm-hmm. he'll be the best receiver in the XFL. Uh, and yeah. I absolutely mean that. I doubt that he will. I hope he does because... You know, I'm gonna, I, like I said, I'm only going to shit on him for a little bit. I'm not going to be like, hey, fuck it, Tony Callaway, bro. Here we go, Brownies. Here we go. He Whoop, hurt the Browns. Stupid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm not like that. I don't. People that are like that with their teams are stupid and idiots. Um, right. So, yeah, I hope he gets his head on right. I hope he figures out whatever he's got to figure out with himself because he has the talent to be the best receiver in the XFL and be a true number one in the NFL. So, if he can get right with that, cool. If he can't, right. then that's you know it's on him. All right, let me say something here. Sure. Um, he so the stuff when he was in college seems pretty rough. Pretty rough. Okay, but I don't know if he was ever charged with anything. Mm-hmm. The first, the rape thing seems sketchy on his end. Like he, yeah. he seems like he may be in the wrong here. But I, I guess you can't say anything happened. You, you just can't. And you can Legally, assume. yes. But it, it's it's hard. Um, the credit card thing, was he ever charged with that? I don't, I don't know. It doesn't say here. Uh, but the stuff that happened after he was, dra- he was drafted, um, was all marijuana stuff, right? Uh, but we for the know. most part, yes. Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. For the go most ahead. part, yes. Uh, he had some stuff where, I mean, off the field, yeah. Uh, he had some stuff on the field where he was right. just, like, he came to camp and he was, failed his conditioning test, which, Jesus Christ, if you fail an NFL conditioning test, you suck. Uh, those are mostly dumb, not dumb, dumb easy. Cause I mean, they are hard for regular people, but like for yeah, NFL, know. yeah, for what well, you fucked it or not, but like for, <laughs> uh, an NFL athlete, especially a receiver, like you should be able to pass those. Like, it's not going to be fun or anything, but like that shouldn't be hard. Um, right. And just, just constant 
just like, oh, that was the route I was supposed to run. Oh, whoops. And then it's like, dude. But yeah. So it was like lack of focus. Lack of but focus. as far as like the legal problem, the, lo- the legal problems here are all marijuana things. Yes. And that's not going to be a problem in the XFL because they don't test for marijuana. We- I, that's weird to me that they don't. So, because, yeah. But that's good, right? It is that's good. That's something we were in favor of. It's so, good for um, the XFL. I don't think it's good for him, but... Yeah, maybe not, but if he's going to do it anyway, <laughs> yeah, if, that, if yeah. he feels like, oh, well, and I can play football, and you know, let's be real, I don't don't want to be an asshole to the XFL players, but they're not on the same level as true number one guys in the they're not. <laughs> NFL. Absolutely not. And if you think Callaway can be that, even if I... he's at 75% of his full power, he hasn't even gone super <laughs> saiyan yet. He hasn't reached his final form. <laughs> <laughs> then, then he should still be able to dominate. And he'll be really good with the Vipers. If he gets his head on right. Should quickly. He, yeah. Should quickly become their number one guy. Uh, yeah. If he doesn't do anything more stupid. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. So I agree. Um, good signing. Brings into some of the questions, the things we heard before uh, about, you know, no criminal past or anything. Yeah. Kind of wishy-washy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but also whatever, kind of weird that the XFL doesn't test for marijuana when they're like, "If you had a DUI, you're not <laughs> playing this far away." So. My assumption is like half the WWE roster smokes weed, and they're like, "Yeah, yeah it's kind of a double standard, huh?" You know what's weird is now that I've heard <laughs> Oliver Luck's voice, and I still do the Vince McMahon voice, and I know what Oliver Luck looks like. I'm just picturing Oliver Luck being like, <laughs> <laughs> "You're thinking Oliver Luck and Vince McMahon have become one." <laughs> yeah, <they're> fused. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm excited to see. Antonio Callaway could really light it up in the XFL. So I hope he does well. I hope he does well, too. And I hope maybe this shows him, like, hey, you could be really fucking good. And yeah. maybe you should get your shit together. Maybe. And go back to the NFL. Perhaps. So, anyway, next story. So, the New York Guardians and the St. Louis Battlehawks traded. There's been a shit ton of trades recently. Yes, there has like been. a shit ton. Too much to talk about. Too much trading. Too much waving. Too much signing. Can't talk about all of this. Can't it's talk too about much. it. Can't do it. But this one's kind of cool because it's a four-player trade. Ooh, and wow. This is, the, this is the most players we've seen trade in XFL history. Of course, we recorded reported on the first XFL trades. Now we'll report on the first multi-person trade in XFL history. Um, so the New York Gardens. New York Gardens. The New York, <laughs> New York Gardens. Oh, the, the New York Guardians traded offensive tackle Brian Wallace and cornerback David Rivers. The St. Louis Battlehawks for a pair of offensive guards, Avery Young and Dijon Allen. I think it's Dijon. Dijon? Dijon. I don't know. Dijon? I don't know. Dijon. Uh, Dijon. So Brian Wallace. <laughs> Dijon. <laughs> Brian Wallace comes out of the University of Arkansas. Uh, he started 29 games on the offensive line. Um, you know, SEC guy. Big dude, six foot three, 320, or six foot six, 320. Um, and he's going into a really loaded. Uh, tackle room with you know they have a ton of guys bruno reagan andrew mcdonald matt mccann's kent perkins so he's gonna he's got five days during a spot so we'll see if that happens yep uh and the other piece going to the um going to the battle hawks david rivers uh the corner he went out undrafted at youngstown in 2017 Mm -hmm. Uh, he signed with the green bay packers uh he bounced around a bunch of nfl teams 2017 2018 2019 bounced around and now he's the eighth corner cornerback on that roster. So they just keep loading up on the same position, <laughs> which corners. I don't know. It's going to also be tough for him to make a spot with that many cornerbacks on the roster. Yes. Um, for the Guardian side, who I think won this trade, uh, they upgraded <coughs> the offensive line where they had a need. I remember they cut the Quanjo brothers. Uh, yep. They they need some guards. So Is Avery they- Young, uh, Avery Young, he has experience playing in like leagues like the XFL expansion leagues. With the AF, the CFL, um, and then Dijon, 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 Allen recently spent a year on the practice squad with the Bears and some time with the Packers. So I think they upgraded where they need to upgrade. I think they got the better end of this deal. Seems like the Battle Hawks sort of just upgraded what they are, are added to an already vast depth of players at those positions. So yep. I don't. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. It's kind of cut and dry. It is exactly cut and dry. Uh, something I want to mention <laughs> about these trades, uh, since a lot of these coaches aren't necessarily like haven't really been around the game for a long time. Perhaps these are players that when they when they were kind of 
I don't say in the game. It's not like they just quit or anything. But like when they were kind of around it, maybe it's someone that they liked or something that they were interested in, and they're like, "Oh, I can get them now." And so something like that, you know what I mean? Just so they could get a closer look. But for sure, yeah, I just think that makes sense. Yeah, that anyway, maybe that, that might not anyway, be what it is, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, cut and dry. Um, I mean, Guardians, Battle Hawks. It was just a bit. It was a big trade because it was a lot of people, and it was the first time we saw that, so mm-hmm. it was worth bringing up, but. Pretty cut and dry. Not much else to say about here. I gave you their profiles. Of course, we don't know every player on every roster, and I haven't heard of these guys before. I did my research, so yes, it is what it is. But tons of trades going on. So if you, I want to shout out someone actually while we're here, uh, Connor Folk. I think his name is XFL Connor on Twitter. He reports like all these transactions going on. Good person to keep up with. Um, he just scouts their the transaction page and the roster list and looks for things. Cool person to follow if you want to get all that stuff, but shouting someone out again. But anyway, let's move on to our next story. Yep. Uh, funner? Funner. More fun one, I think. Funner. Uh, Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson are supposed to be calling Fox XFL games. So according to Art Stapleton, who's a beat writer for the Giants uh, and... You know, he just does NFL stuff. He uh, he tweeted that I'm told, he said, I'm told New Jersey natives Kevin Burkhardt and Greg Olson will be in Fox broadcast booth together as a team for a handful of XFL games um, per his source. I don't know what his source is, but he went on to say the first game for Burkhardt and Olson will be close to home, February 9th, MetLife Stadium, New York Guardians, and Tampa Bay Vipers, so... That's kind of cool. Greg Olson, I think, is the cooler one out of those two. I've actually heard a lot from Kevin Burkhardt because he calls a lot of Vikings games, weirdly. Yeah. For Fox. I've seen him call a lot of Vikings games. Um, Super fun guy, Kevin Burkhardt. Uh, He's super energetic. He's one of those... He's a play-by-play. He's the play-by-play guy, and Greg Olson's probably going to be the color guy. Yeah. Um, But Kevin Burkhardt's one of those guys who can really make a touchdown sound really exciting. You can find... (laughs) You can find... um, you can find on YouTube like his best calls of 2018. He's just he's super pumped every time there's like an interception and there's a touchdown. I mean he's he's great. I actually think he's really good. So and then Greg Olson. I have we seen Greg Olson in a booth before? Uh, I my brain says yes, but I can't remember where. I can't remember where either. But I do like Greg Olson. Yes, Greg Olson's a cool. If you guy. don't know, Greg Olson tight end for the Carolina Panthers. Not retired yet, but it's looking like it's kind of it coming be very, very soon. soon. Yes. And that's probably where he's heading is to the booth to commentate, much like Romo and much like Jason Witten, but hopefully not like Jason Witten and more like Romo. <laughs> Jason Witten was just um, a liar. Yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of Jason Witten in the he booth. Just, I don't know he if he'll would, be going back. He would just say things that like didn't happen. Like what? Like, oh, look at yeah. this run play. It was, it was a 20-yard pass, Jason. Oh, shit. <laughs> But hopefully it's not a tight end thing. And Greg Olson, oh, what? Who, who's another tight end? What's his name? Uh, why is his name escaping me right now? Tony Gonzalez. Falcons tight end. Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez. Uh, he's fantastic. He's a tight end. He doesn't call games per se, but he's a personality, TV personality. Uh, yep. Hopefully Greg Olson's more like him and less like Jason Witten. Yes. Uh, but Greg Olson seems like a really fun guy. If you've seen any of his interviews, he's funny and he's very personable. Mm-hmm. And I think he'll be a lot like Tony Romo in the booth. I don't know if he has the same mind of tony romo where tony romo looks at a play and knows exactly what's gonna happen and can also be really funny yes but i think greg olson will be funny and a a good color guy yeah i like this combo hopefully they call at least at least like half of the fox games i'd like to see him on he says a handful that'd be five so they're doing the fox games the espn games or what or, oh, we, we, this was a previous story, and I cannot tell you off the top of my head. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that, I, did, I, figured out. I know Pat McAfee is, is the sideline guy, right? Or yeah, McAfee, yeah. not McAfee. Pat McAfee. McAfee. Yeah, uh, he's, one of, he's the guy who's like on the field. Yeah, um, okay. Well, Diana maybe, Rossini. Okay, I have no idea. one of the names. Just people, but this, this one sounds more fun to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do like Pat McAfee. Yeah, I think Pat McAfee will be the draw to ESPN, but I think... Greg Olson's going to be pretty good. And Kevin Burkhardt's good, too. So Yeah, Kevin Burkhardt's good. He's yeah. actually really, he's really exciting as a commentator. Yeah. He's one of those guys who starts yelling every time something happens. And I yeah, like he's, that. The, he's the anti-gymnast Joe Buck and Chris Collinsworth, yes. which is great. Yes. So. Whoa. <laughs> Do you hate Chris Collinsworth because he does PFF? 
Uh, that's a factor. <laughs> but Chris Collinsworth, one, he has an amazing voice for uh, broadcast, and he right. isn't. He is not the worst. Like he's not actually terrible, but he'll yeah. just he'll just say some weird things. I like. like him. I, he's okay, but yeah, the PFF stuff because I though I don't like PFF. Is, is yeah. definitely, a, yeah. definitely a thing. Uh, okay. Well, that's all our stories for today. We talked a lot about the Luis Perez one. I didn't write anything for that one, so yes, we talked a lot about that one and yeah. the Antonio Callaway one. We talked about these other two. I mean, they were worth mentioning, but yeah. not a we time had, to say here. We had thirty anyway, minutes worth of news. That's crazy. Are we? Are we at thirty minutes? Yeah. Jeez. All right. Well, this might be a long one because now we're gonna get on to the big chunk of our show. Yes. The big chunk. The big it's chunk. Our fantasy rankings for the oh, xfl Lord, top junk. five at every position and we are doing a ppr format that's worth mentioning because they're different and if yeah, you know different. do you prefer i already know the answer you prefer mm-hmm. full point ppr that's i think if you don't play a full point ppr point. what's the fucking point <laughs> i can understand a half point PPR. i can i can i can understand half point ppr uh, yeah you're right i can understand half point ppr if you don't play ppr you're fucking stupid <laughs> yeah you should you should do ppr you should do ppr, PPR <laughs> the best way Yes. If you're not aware, PPR stands for points per reception. For anyone who doesn't play fantasy, I don't. And I don't we understand might, uh, people don't play PPR. We might lose. We might not entertain a, a segment of our audience here with these fantasy rankings, but um, it's worth talking about because there's a lot of people that want to play fantasy. So yeah, um, and so we're first, also running out of content. <laughs> we are, though. Uh, this is okay. I think we're okay. Yeah. I think we're we're getting close, man. We are it's getting the 19th. close. That is how time works. It's the 19th. Going to come out on the 20th. And it's it's almost here, man. It's what almost eighteen here. days, something like that. I don't know how many days are in this month. <laughs> eighteen or nineteen days? Several. Nineteen days. Yes. <laughs> I looked it. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Starting off with our quarterbacks. Uh, I'll go first. You go second. All right. We're, I'm just gonna list them, and you'll just list them, and then we'll discuss. Okay. okay. So for me, on the quarterbacks, how we did this, I guess this is worth pointing out too. Um, how we did this is we're taking whole quarterback rooms. It's because it's I, I don't know how many leagues this should be the way that leagues do it. I'm not sure if they will. If they do it this way, there is gonna be limitations that I'll talk about here in a second. But okay, so how I listed it was number one, DC Defenders quarterbacks. Number mm-hmm. two, Los Angeles Wildcats quarterbacks. Number three, the Renegades quarterbacks. Number four, Houston Roughnecks quarterbacks. And number five, the New York Guardians quarterbacks. All right. What do you got? I got number one, D.C. Defenders quarterbacks. Number two, okay. Houston Roughnecks quarterbacks. Number three, San Luis Battlehawks quarterbacks. Number four, Wildcat quarterbacks. And five, New York Guardian quarterbacks. Okay. So, right off the bat, we both agree that Defenders quarterbacks are number one. And that would be, I assume, because of Cardell Jones. Because of Cardell and his supporting cast, yes. Yeah, he has a shit ton of good receivers. Like, almost too many receivers. Yeah. Which, when we get further into this... You're going to see negatively affects how I rank those receivers because I think there's too much talent. Ooh, there's wow. too many people that need the ball. Wow. And that's going to affect where I think the wide receiver value is there with the defenders. But who will benefit from that is the quarterback, Cardell Jones, who will likely be starting all year. Mm-hmm. Whereas I said, quarterbacks will be changing out a lot. I think Cardell Jones kind of has that locked in. Yeah. Um, we've talked about Cardell Jones. We both had him ranked as our number one quarterback, like just in terms of how talented they are. Yep. And... We we both love them, so that one's no brainer. Do you want to say anything about the defenders' quarterbacks while you have them number one? I, I you covered got to be the same thing. Yeah, you covered everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, second biggest difference I'm noticing here, you have the roughnecks slightly higher than me. Yes, two spots higher. I have them at four. You have them at two. I'm surprised by this actually. So why do you have the roughnecks quarterback so high? Uh, so June Jones, uh, his offensive system is the how you spell long pass, L O pass. Uh, mm-hmm. So. That's why. <laughs> yeah, uh, I agree with you. <laughs> so I think they'll have a lot of big completions and stuff like that. And I think they'll have a lot of... Uh, now, while that may also not... Yeah, that may turn into interceptions, too. But I think if, on the positive end, I think they'll get a lot of points, fantasy-wise. Okay. Um, I agree with you. I, I have them ranked slightly lower just because mm-hmm. uh, I have the Wildcats ahead of them because I like how Josh Johnson can be a dual threat compared to i know philip walker can be but i'm not sure if philip walker's gonna be the one starting and i yeah I, as time has gone on i've leaned more to, started 
to concede, even though I love me some Philip Walker, that Connor Cook probably earns that starting job and it's going to rotate between the two. Yeah. Like, you know, throughout the season. But I think Connor Cook probably has that job secured at this point, just from what I've seen actually attending the practice and seeing him sling it and getting the most snaps. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have the Wildcats ahead because of that. And then I have the Renegades ahead of the Roughnecks here. And what's going to be interesting here is you don't have the Renegades on your top five at all. I do not. Um, do you have them at like six or seven or something? Or you I just... would have them at six if there was a six slot. Right. Okay. Um, the reason I'm raising them up, and I have a feeling I know why you don't have them on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I have them at three ahead of the Roughnecks is because of what Landry Jones can do in a system he's familiar with. They also have, like the defenders, a shit ton of talent. They have yes, Jeff they, Day, they have Jazz Ferguson. They have running backs who can catch the ball. Yes. Um, I think he's going to benefit a lot from Jazz Ferguson being a touchdown machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also have a great tight end, I believe. And I think they have a shit ton of weapons. Landry Jones is one of the best quarterbacks in a system he's familiar with. He should be productive. Why don't you have them on the list? Landry Jones is hurt. Yeah, okay. Um, now, 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 let me dispute <laughs> that point real quick. He um, is not hurt. He is hurt. Mm-hmm. But how severe he's hurt is up for question. There's still, it's not, we're not sure. He, it is, they might drop down lower if, uh, if he's out for three weeks, because three weeks in the NFL isn't a long time. Mm-hmm. Three weeks in the XFL, we only have 10 games, the long time for fantasy yes. value. So I, I understand that. But if he comes back, that's good. I also don't think Eric Dungy or Philip Nelson are going to be that much of a drop off. And if we're all taking right. the whole quarterback room, I'm still feeling pretty safe with all the weapons they have there. Yeah. Any other reason other than him being hurt that you have them so low? Because if he wasn't hurt, they'd be my number one. Oh, they'd be your number one if he wasn't hurt. Yep. They actually might. They might be my number two if they weren't hurt. If he wasn't mm-hmm. hurt. But uh, okay. Uh, I think that's all we need to talk about with the quarterbacks there. Anything else you want to point out here? Uh, oh, the battle. Why do you have the battle hawks at three? There, that was the other question. Why do you have the battle hawks at three? Because I love Jordan Tomo. Yeah, but why not pick that up? Because I love Jordan Tomu, dog. Because you love Jordan Tomu. That's and really the only reason you have him at three? No, I think... Um, <laughs> I also think... <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I didn't clear my throat. I also think they just, they'll just they have a they have a decent supporting cast. And I think I think they'll be a very balanced offense. So I think that's a lot of completions. I think that's a good amount of yards. And I think that right. it'll, it'll be like a pro style. So I think they'll get... I think they'll pass more than they run, but I think the run will also... Like, the running backs, I think, will also be receivers looking at the running backs. Yes, yeah, both, both the guys they have. Yes. Both so. the two-star guys are both guys who could be good receivers. I can see what you're saying there. My problem with the Battle Hawks is that uh, I don't we don't know what's happening there. We don't know if Tom is starting. We don't know if Heineke's starting. Uh, so we don't know what we're getting there. Also, I think they're going to be a run-dominant team. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And, I'm also incredibly I'm not, biased. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see that. I didn't. You have the rough. I, I was unbiased on this when you had the roughnecks higher than me. But t- Tamu, I, I I've expressed my issues with Tamu before. Yes, and I also have issues with Heineke, mm-hmm. and I have a feeling that they're going to be a running team mm-hmm. more than a passing team because I don't. Mm-hmm. I can't even off the top of my head who were some of their receivers that are who were some of their weapons. <sighs> I had this written down on my phone. I didn't write it down on the thing. Give me one second. I open my notes app. I mm-hmm. say dramatically right. in order to oh god the app crashed. In order to <laughs> discover <laughs> the receivers that I liked a whole Okay. Uh so Keith Mumphrey, I understand he was traded there late, so he wasn't necessarily a high pick, but I really liked mm-hmm. him at Michigan State. I think he'll do very good. Uh, Demorne mm-hmm. El Pierson, is that how you say that? Okay, Whatever. He's de- he, yeah, he's pretty good. I like him a lot. Uh, I, I he probably doesn't have that much on, on his name, but I said it anywhere. <laughs> uh, Terrence Williams also. Um, mm-hmm. I think Terrence he's going Williams. to be fantastic. I think he'll probably be the leader of that wide receiver room, and we'll talk uh-huh. more about him later. But yeah, I think we there's. Will. I think the the Battle Hawks are. I think the most solid. And not necessarily jump off the paper like, whoa, it would be mm-hmm. fucking good. But I think they're the most solid team on paper. Yeah, I just don't see explosive plays out of that offense. 
unless mm-hmm. he comes on the ground. Mm-hmm. Also, if Jordan Tamu is the starter, uh, he can move a little bit. So yeah. that'll help okay. a lot. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Well, that's enough for our quarterbacks. Um, I, do one one I do want to mention one more thing. I do want to mention. What do you want to mention? Uh, so Guardians quarterback, and I, I have them at number five, and you have them at number five as well. Uh, mm-hmm. For me, it's I put that because Kevin Gilbride is an offensive minded coach and was office coordinator for the Oilers forever. So I feel like an offensive minded coach, especially one with the pedigree of Kevin Gilbride, will put numbers up with his quarterbacks, and that's all. That's true. And they have Luis Perez now. Yes, so if anything I, I happens made that. To Matt Yes, exactly. So I think they're a safe bet. Yeah, uh, they're they're solid. They're not flashy. They don't have a ton of high. They're 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 a low floor, low. I mean, a high floor, low ceiling team. It, precisely. Where I'm not I'm not too worried. They're very consistent, but they're not someone. Okay, actually, I want to talk about now that we're here. <laughs> we're done. We're done explaining why we ranked them. I want to talk more about fantasy as a whole uh-huh. with the quarterback position. Mm-hmm. So if you know how to play fantasy, you yeah. know you don't take a quarterback in NFL fantasy until the later rounds. Unless here, unless it's Patrick ahead. Mahomes. And this yeah, okay. year, Lamar Jackson. Even then, but, like yeah. you can wait and still. You can play. definitely wait unless you got to. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You always just like I would never take Patrick Holmes early. Like no, I, I get that he is taken early, but the person who takes him early always loses. Yes. So now with the XFL, this might be a little bit different because it, we only if we're doing QB rooms like we ranked them here, there's only eight, so you mm-hmm. can only have an eight person league. You can't have a 10-person league. You only yeah. have an 8-person league. Yeah. And you want to make sure you want to get one of the good ones and you don't get the dragons, right? Oh, well, Would you shit. consider picking a quarterback early, a quarterback room early in this draft? Uh, maybe early. Not, I wouldn't say first round, depending on how the drafts would work, but probably one of the second or third rounds, yes. See, I would strongly consider taking a quarterback early here because Mm -hmm. the other guys, especially this first year, are so much more unknown how much they're going to be used when you know a quarterback's going to get volume. You know, especially if you're taking rooms, you know he's going to – their quarterback will put put up points in some way. That's true, especially if you are taking the room and not necessarily a player. Yes. Right. So I I think you you could make an argument for taking the defender's quarterbacks in the first round. I really do. I and not being bad and not being dumb like it is in the NFL. Yes. So, because there's not options. I, I waited in the NFL. I waited until the 10th round and took Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yes. you can wait in the NFL, but you can't wait here. Yes. So, anyway, that's I just wanted to talk about overall with the quarterbacks. Uh, just a little more tidbit, not really our rankings. But, anyway, we're going to move on to the running backs. Same thing as last time. Let's just list them and we'll discuss Yep. All right, number one for me with the running backs. Cameron Artis Payne for the Renegades. Number two, Kristen Michael, Battlehawks. Number three, Jarrell Presley for the Defenders. Number four, Elijah Hood for the Wildcats. And number five, Trey Williams for the Dragons. All right. So for me, uh, number one, Cameron Artis Payne with the Renegades. Number two, Andre Williams with the Roughnecks. Number three, Justin Stockton from the New York Guardians. Number four, Kristen Michael, or Jesus, that fuck is it? Whatever. For the yeah, Battle Hawks, okay. For the Battle Hawks, in number five, Devion Smith, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Okay. Um, first thing I'll point out, I like your pick with Devion Smith. He's someone who'd probably be six for me. Okay. So I think it's good that you included him, so we can yes. talk about him. Yes. Uh, we both agree, Cameron Artis Payne. Yes. Uh, here's my thing with Cameron Artis Payne. I was a little worried when I put him at one. Okay. He seems like the most surefire. And that if he gets like, the volume, yeah. to put up plenty of points. He's probably the most talented back here. Mm-hmm. But he has Lance Dunbar behind him. That's who's true. He's also pretty talented and also has a ton of experience. Mm-hmm. And I've seen a lot of hype through highlights and through pictures of Lance Dunbar. Mm-hmm. It scares me that we might get a little bit of a running back by committee. And that's the thing kind of with all these teams. Is I'm kind of worried we're going to get running back by committee. Yeah. Um, I think... Uh... I think something important to mention with running backs and wide receivers especially, this is kind of a crapshoot. Uh, oh, yeah, for sure. So, well, we try to make the most informed decision, we're probably more likely than not going to be super wrong. So, But hopefully not, because we're going to be in a league, Thomas, and we got to win. So we got we got to really <laughs> analyze here. You're right. I think Cameron, Cameron Artis Payne is not going to be my first overall pick. Mm-hmm. If I'm like in a league, I'm probably grabbing the guy I'm going to talk about next in our wide receiver group as my first overall pick. 
because I could trust that he'll be more productive. The running backs scare me because all of them seem like they could be running back by committees. Every single room could be a yes. running back by committee. Yes. Um, Cameron Artis Payne is just probably the most talented. He can catch passes. And so that's why I have him at number one. He would be the first running back I took, but it'd be with a grain of salt. And almost any of these running backs I grab, I'm grabbing their handcuff in a later round. For yes. Sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, next person we got to mention, you have Andre Williams on there. Yes, Why I do you have Andre Williams? So, do you remember how I said that June Jones runs the LO pass offense? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, on the goal line, uh, June Jones, more often than not, will just run the ball because he doesn't have a lot of space to work with and uh, can't use the LO pass technique. Uh, so, yeah, Andre okay. Williams <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Andre Williams <laughs> is a power back uh uh, and he's got some juice to him, so I think in short yardage goal line situations, he'll get the call, and I think he can get a lot of touchdowns that way. Okay. Here's my concern with Andre Williams and why I didn't put him on my list, because I thought about it. Yes. Um, as far as I can tell, and this this might be sitting on you a little bit for not That's telling fine. you this beforehand. That's fine. He was not listed on the roster. Well, now I look like a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> awesome. Now, now this this... This isn't for sure, because like, we still got a lot of hype about him, and I didn't hear anything about him being gone. So maybe he's just like doing something else right now. Maybe. I don't know. But he, I, he might have been at camp, and there's just like... Because I've heard there's been some problems with those roster pages, and everything's not up to date. Okay. So he could be on there, and I don't know. Well... If he is, he makes it in my top five, for sure. Yes. If he is, then I stand by it. If he's not, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't put him at two, still. All right. Uh, sure. The touchdowns alone isn't enough for me. All right. Um, especially when I think they're going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns through the air. Fair. If they do get in the red zone, you're right. They're going to run it with Andre Williams. Fair. For sure. But mm. I think a lot of their scores will be from deep bombs deep like Connor Cook bombs. or Philip Walker. So, Perhaps. Uh, I'd probably move him down. If if I knew for sure he was playing, I'd probably put him at five. All right. But other than that, I mean, I respect you putting it on here so we could talk about it, but. Yes. <laughs> but I otherwise, that was fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, let me see. What else do we have here? Someone you don't have listed. Darrell Presley. All right. Mm-hmm. This is a guy I like a lot. Um, he was the AAF's leading rusher. Yep. Right? So he's got proven production in these secondary leagues. Yes. Uh, he was really good in New Mexico. He's a 4-4 speed guy. And he's for sure going to be with with people... Not willing to stack the box against Cardell Jones. Everything's going to be spread out when you're playing Cardell Jones. Yep. That's a lot of softer looks up front. A lot of room to run through. Correct. I'm really like, and Jarrell Presley should be the number one guy, at least on running downs. Of course, you've got Danelle Pumphrey for passing downs. Yes. So you could put Danelle Pumphrey as a guy you also handcuff here. I mean, almost all of these guys are handcuffs. Yes. But, uh, you know, Jarrell Presley, I think, is a really good option. Just because he's going to never see a stack box with Cardell Jones behind center, like ever. Yes. And with all the weapons they have at wide receiver, he's going to have wide open running lanes. I, I just think I might even move him to two if Kristen Michael didn't have such a big name. Um, why do you have Kristen Michael at four? Um, because he shares the backfield with a, mm-hmm. well, according to the roster page, Matt Jones, who is yep, also right. quite good and. Not, I I would say Christian Michael is better, but yeah. Matt Jones and Christian Michael arguably are the same type of running back. That's um, true. So I feel as though that will be the most running back by committee committee that's there. Um, besides, uh, what I'm taking Elijah Hood's on. Um, so I just feel like that they'll, that'll be split pretty evenly. So I feel like if you're looking for fantasy points, probably not your the best route to go, but if you're looking for real life football success, which is what matters. I think that's fine. Mm-hmm. But not what our show's about. I am at two. Oh. <laughs> so I I also have the concerns you have here. Yes. Another guy. For sure handcuffing if I can. Mm-hmm. Uh, might be hard because Matt Jones, I assume, will get s- scooped up pretty early too. Yes. So you're kind of hoping, okay, which one's going to be more productive? Um, I'm a little worried about Kristen Michael, but I think he was one of the biggest names in the XFL. They're going to use him. Like, even though Matt Jones is also a big name, more people know who Kristen Michael is just because his name's more interesting. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's part of it. You want to win games, right? But you also want to get people, you want to build stars, and you want to get people there. He's potentially already a star in the making. 
I think they're going to get him a lot of work early on. If he doesn't do much with it, then they shift more to Matt Jones. Yeah. But I am worried. That's why he's not one for me. I might even move him down to three because I do like Jarrell Presley a lot. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I'm worried with Matt Jones in there, but he still has a lot of talent and I hope he does well. Yes. Um, any players you want to talk about on your list? Uh, Justin Stockton, uh, mm-hmm. the New York Guardians. Yes, the New York Guardians running back room is underwhelming, to say the least. Yes, it is. Um, so Justin Stockton with prior experience at Texas Tech and uh, blah, whatever AAF team was like the firefighters. The name escapes me right now. <laughs> you say that every time. Well, because I, I always look it up for the show and then I forget. They had really cool uniforms. But uh, mm. he was very good there, and I think he'll he will be the one to come out of that running back room as the starter. So I think that they he has a solid shot to have a lot of volume, just because the rest of that room is a little underwhelming to me. So, right, yes, um, guy I want to talk about. Okay, mm-hmm. is Trey Williams. All right, this this room is super scary. This Dragons room because this yes, one is. is like pure running back by committee. I think absolutely all. That, all all the guys are going to see the field. Yes. The problem is the Dragons are for sure going to be a run-heavy team because they for don't sure. have a lot of talent at wide receiver and they don't have a lot of talent at quarterback. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to lean on that run a lot. And so why? And I was like, I have to get a piece of that production. I have to grab someone from the Dr- Dragons running back room. Mm-hmm. And the reason I picked Trey Williams is because he's the best pass catcher out of the three. For okay. sure. And so if I'm going to get a guy from to get some of that volume, I want – the guy who can also give me some PPR points. I want Trey Williams in a PPR league. If it was not, if it was standard league, I'd go another direction. But Trey Williams is my guy because they're going to run the ball a lot. I think he'll get some volume in the running game, but he'll get a lot of volume in the passing game where I think that team's going to be doing a lot of check downs. Yep. You're going to be racking up PPR points with Trey Williams. I just, I, that's that's how I'm leaning. So, All right. Anyway, uh, anyone else you want to talk about? I want to talk about somebody who I don't have listed. Uh, as a reason okay. why I don't, or a reason why I don't, hold on. I want to talk about somebody I do not have listed as a reason why someone you have listed is not on my list. Bang. Mm, okay. Uh, okay so, so I do not have Elijah Hood on my list at all. Okay. And all right. that is because there is a player on the Wildcats whose name is Larry Rose the second, I think, who yeah. I think is a better player than Elijah Hood, and I think will, Jesus. Sorry, my dog just hit a door with a shoe. That? My dog just hit a door with a shoe. He's having a great time. <laughs> um, and I think uh, he's just announcing the thunderous ability of Larry Rose. And I think Larry Rose <laughs> will um, probably over to Elijah Hood may get the goal line carries, but I think Larry Rose will be your open field back. So really like Larry Rose, but I couldn't put him on in my top five. Just wanted to shout him out. Yeah, I put Elijah Hood up there because of the goal line work. Yes. Same thing with Andre Williams. I thought he was an Andre Williams type player. He is. But that's actually for sure on a roster. <laughs> so. yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> and I think he's a keyhole pass catcher too. So mm-hmm. if you want to put him in some passing downs, you could. Uh, but overall, I, I I think the safest pick here for me is Jarrell Presley. Everyone else is a crapshoot. Mm-hmm. What do you think? <laughs> uh, I would say I erred in not putting Jarrell Presley on my list. Um, I kind of said. Or my thought process was, well, then I'll pump then I'll, then I'll pump freeze there too. Uh, but but he's not getting a running down uh, work. He's getting maybe. passing down work. Yeah, maybe. Looking back at it, uh, I probably would have put him probably – I probably should put him in at three and moved everyone down one. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I like Gerald Presley too. Okay. Well, um, I'm trying to think if there's any uh, galaxy brain shit I can say about fantasy strategy with running backs here. You're going to have to running handcuff every single matter. running back you get. Well, in the NFL, running backs don't matter. But in fantasy, they do. Yeah, they do because it's bullshit. <laughs> but every single running back you grab in, in in XFL fantasy, you have to grab their handcuff. Yes, you because you just – it's a total crapshoot. Like, you have yeah. no idea. <laughs> so. So. Um, all right. Let's move on to wide receivers. All right. Same as earlier. Let's list them. All right. Number one for me, Sammy Coates for the Roughnecks. Number two, Eli Rogers for the Defenders. Number three, D'Angelo Yancey for the Guardians. Number four, Jazz Ferguson for the Renegades. And number five, Antonio Callaway for the Vipers. All right. So me, number one, Jazz Ferguson for the Dallas Renegades. Number two, Nelson Spruce for the LA Wildcats. Number three, Sammy Coates for the Houston Roughnecks. 
Number four, Rashad Ross for the DC Defenders. And number five, Terrence Williams for the St. Louis Battlehawks. Okay. Okay. So, first thing I want to let's just talk about our number ones because they're yes. different. Yes. All right. I have Sammy Coates at one. Yes. And this is largely this isn't bias. I guess you, it's something like bias, but it's more the fact that I got to see him play. Okay. And holy shit, he looked a lot better than everyone else out there. Yes. Like he, I haven't seen everyone else live. But my God, he looked faster. He looked like he had better hands. He had looked like better ball control, and it looked like he was getting every single pass. Okay. And they're running that run and shoot. They're running what do you call it? Lo pass offense. Lo pass offense. Yes. He's gonna be down the field running streaks like seventy five percent of the time, getting deep bombs from whoever's throwing the ball. Mm. I, I love Sammy Coates here just because I think he's gonna get a shit ton of volume, shit ton of yards, production volume. That's what you're looking for. Sammy Coates is my guy for that. All right. You have Jazz Ferguson. That I do. Go ahead. That I do. Explain it. So, uh, I will preface this by saying I think either Jazz Ferguson or uh, Jeff Baddett or Bidet. Bidet. Is his name Bidet? Did we figure that out? I don't know. But I think it's Bidet. That makes more sense. Well, that's a toilet, but whatever. So, uh, Jeff Bidet will be the number one receiver, but if I had to pick between either or, it'd be Jazz Ferguson uh, just because of his Mm -hmm. physical talents. And right. uh, I think Stoops will find ways to get him the ball. So, yeah. <laughs> here's here's my problem. Here's why I have Jazz Ferguson at four. So it's what you said about um, Jeff Bidet. I think you're going to split a lot of volume. Mm-hmm. Short, intermediate stuff's going to Jeff Bidet. Deeper stuff, more contested catch type things will go to Jazz Ferguson. Why Jeff Bidet is not in my top five is because Jazz Ferguson's going to be getting all the touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And so is their tight end. And I don't think there will be many touchdowns left for Jeff Bidet. So that's why he doesn't make the top five for me. Mm-hmm. And Jazz Ferguson moves down because he'll be getting a shit ton of touchdowns. He's not at one for me or in the top three for me. Because though he'll be getting a shit load of touchdowns, I think outside of the red zone, they're not going to be looking his way as much as they're going to be looking at, uh, you know, uh, what, what are those? not as much as they're going to be looking at Jeff Bidet. They're going to be looking yes. at Jazz Ferguson more. So. Yes. That's why I have them listed there. Uh, we have, we're we very different on this one. Yes, so we are. Some of your guys are definitely guys that are like really close to my list. They just didn't make my top five. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about Nelson Spruce, who you have it too. I really like Nelson Spruce. Um, also, looking at the rest of that wide receiver room, it's kind of the same situation as Justin Stockton, where I am underwhelmed. Uh, mm-hmm. They do have Trey McBride, who I think will... Probably also get a few looks here, more looks here and there, but I think mm-hmm. out of there, I think Nelson Spruce is going to be their go-to. Right, um, I agree with you. Especially with uh, Josh Johnson, because uh, he'll probably adapt more of like a, not a shorter pass game, and I don't want to say West Coast offense, yeah. but like... I get what you're saying. More intermediate game, and I think Nelson Spruce excels at that, while Trey McBride is more of a deep threat. Uh, right. So, I just, I really like Nelson Spruce. I think he'll be their go-to guy. That's That's, that's my pick. Yeah, Nelson Spruce would probably land somewhere six, seven, eight, somewhere in there for me, mm-hmm. because he is going to be truly their number one guy. Trey McBride, exactly what you said, is right. Love Nelson Spruce as a grab, um, and they will be running more intermediate stuff for sure, just because mm-hmm. that's if you watch Josh Johnson play, that's how he plays. Yes, and they don't have a fantastic running back room either. They so there's going to be a lot of passing plays, mm-hmm. um, and they have probably the best quarterback, and so you know. That's a good choice. Uh, Rashad Ross, right? Mm-hmm. He was someone I definitely was considering. Uh, I, now, I picked Eli Rogers over him, so we're disputing here. I have Eli Rogers as my defender's go-to. You have Rashad Ross. Um, Did we ever figure out what the deal was with Rashad Davis or Rashad Davis? He's he's on the he's on the Titans. Okay. Yeah, he's returning kicks for the Titans. Cool, cool, cool. So, All right. Yeah. Um, my thing here is... Rashad Ross is a new addition. He got traded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I feel like Eli Rogers has had time to work with um, Cardale. All right. I think they already have more of a connection built. Rashad Ross obviously was a stud. Um, and lots of people say he's the best wide receiver available. But I think Eli Rogers has more of a track record at the NFL level. And sure. I, I'd like to see, I just feel like Eli Rogers has a lot of proven ability in production and someone, I think Cardale Jones could find a lot more in the intermediate game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could see Rashad Ross, you know, deep yeah. ball stuff like that, but it, 
it, it, it's interesting. This one's a hard one, and this is one that's like tough for me between Eli Rogers and Rashad Ross. But I, I, I'm leaning more. You have to pick one. I don't think. You yeah, can pick both. you can't pick both. So I, I'm I lean, lean towards Eli Rogers. Why did you lean towards Rashad Ross? Uh, just because I feel as if his skill set will uh, be more attractive to the offense that the defenders run. Uh, while mm-hmm. Eli does have more NFL experience, I think that's a byproduct of the Steelers really kind of really kind of sticking by who they get and all that, which we'll talk about more if we talk about Sammy Coates. Um, but Eli Rogers is also good, and Rashad Ross is good, and like we said about the defenders, they have a crap ton of weapons. So, But if I had to pick one to come out of the pack, uh, statistically, it'd be Rashad Ross. Especially okay. in PPR. Um all right, you want to talk shit about Sammy Coates, go for it. I don't it. want to talk shit about Sammy Coates. <laughs> I mean, you have him at three. That's pretty high. I just, yeah. So. I think he'll be I think he'll be good. I just, I don't think he's not a complete receiver. And I feel like mm-hmm. if he if he's in his role, then he will succeed in his role. Um, but he's got to be in his role. And he'll drop some that are like, bro, the fuck? So, um, which I'm just going off of the fact that he has. So maybe he's gotten better. And if he has, awesome. Um, but I think he'll still succeed in the LO pass offense. Um, but mm-hmm. I think that'll be his role. I don't think you're going to have him. It's kind of what like people would say about DK Metcalf negatively, where it's like, well, you can only run three routes with him. Well, great. If he wins the routes, who cares? Um, right. so kind of that type of deal. Uh, so yeah, it's, I would be much, much, much higher on Sammy Coates if he didn't have questionable hands. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. Um, so you have Terrence Williams on here. I don't. Yes. Um, just because I'm, I think Terrence Williams is a uh, another one of those high floor, low ceiling guys. Yeah. Um, where I'm more skewed on the wide receiver end towards guys who I thought had a lot of upside. Upside. Okay. Um, did did you put Terrence Williams on there solely because you thought of the the high floor? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay. Um. I think one that's interesting and we should talk about because you don't have him on this list and I want to know why mm-hmm. is Antonio Callaway. Um, because as I said earlier in the podcast, uh, if he gets his head on right and just works and focuses up, he'll be the best receiver in the XFL by a mile. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, everything that he's done to this point would suggest that he's not going to do that. So would you say he is the Antonio Brown of this season <laughs> apparently uh, for fantasy. You remember how yeah, you still had to spend a high draft pick to grab Antonio Brown in fantasy this year. Yes. Yeah, but you were like, I don't know. I suppose. I don't know what's going to happen here. Now, like um, you said, the Expos I think that, the test I, for I, marijuana. That's how I feel. So I, I yeah. think probably, maybe not, sus- mm, I don't know. Plus, you also have to take into account that the Vipers do have a very shorter passing game, which Callaway isn't necessarily bad at because he's not bad at anything on the football field. Um, but... They just might not be able to get to him as consistently as like a they LO pass offense, for example. So Yeah. So for me, he is the highest upside player in the draft. Absolutely. hundred percent. But he is also the lowest floor. <laughs> Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. So um I have to put him at five because the upside is just ridiculous. He would he could literally be my number one guy. Mm-hmm. Uh he will get a shit ton of volume because who else are they throwing to? True. Uh, they 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 don't have a ton of receivers there. They do have my boy Nick Truesdale, but I feel like Antonio Callaway is going to be sucking up volume if he's playing. He's sucking it. On, he's going to be sucking on volume. Like a vacuum. He's a vacuum. So sucking he'll be getting hose. every pass thrown his way. Yes. I think he'll be roasting DBs. Mm-hmm. And if he can stay on the field, and if he could stay in shape, and if all those things work out, like he could by far be the best guy here. Yep. Like, I just don't think it's going to happen. But if he proves me wrong, then good. Yeah, so I think he's worth a shot. Would I spend a first round pick on him? No, you can't. Yeah, it's risky, right? Maybe a second. I could do a second. Yeah, but I could can. risk it for a second with that much upside. Yeah, I could see a second. Um, okay, well, I think we've talked enough here. Um, I'll brief. Okay, I'll briefly mention we talked. I like how I said we weren't going to talk about every player, and we won't <laughs> going forward because we're going to. It's going to take forever. But I'm going to briefly mention D'Angelo Yancey. All right. Um, I told you how much I like his skill set and how good I think he could be, and he's one and two with Jazz Ferguson. Yep. Both guys are lower on my list. Both D'Angelo Yancey and Jazz Ferguson aren't at the top of my list. Mm-hmm. They're slightly lower, just because I don't know. D'Angelo Yancey has Mikhail McKay ahead of him. Yep. 
and uh, Jazz Ferguson has Jeff Bidet ahead of him. So we'll see how that works out. It's the only reason. But I think yes. there's a shit ton of touchdowns, both of them. But that's yes. why I want D'Angelo Yancey. I'd probably pick him up in the second round as well. Um, okay, let's move on to tight end. Let's do it. Um, lots of agreement here. Yes. Slightly different order, but pretty much the same players. Yeah. All right. Number one, Nick Truesdale, Vipers, my boy. Number mm-hmm. two, Brandon Barnes, the Wildcats. Number three, Donald Parham, the Renegades. Number four, EJ Bibbs, the Guardians. Number five, Kerry Lee, Defenders. All right. Uh, number one, Nick Truesdale, the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, number two, AJ B- EJ Bibbs, New York Guardians. Three, Kari. Is it Kari or Kerry? I don't know. I'm going to say Kari. <laughs> Kari Lee, DC, DC Defenders. And uh, four, Brandon Barnes, LA Wildcats. And five, Donald Parham, Dallas Renegades. All right. Let's talk about Donald Parham. Let's do it. Because <laughs> this guy is Nick Truesdale, but younger. <laughs> and oh, he is huge. Six foot eight. Also, like like the thing we we don't need to really talk about Nick Truesdale. Yes. Okay. We, we're, we're not you, going to. You've gushed over him enough. But this guy is pretty much Nick Truesdale, but twenty two years old. Yes. And probably not as fast, but definitely not still as fast. pretty pretty damn fast. Yes. Uh, he's six eight, twenty two, huge catching radius. He played for a small school. Um, Stetson. Stinson? Right? Stetson. Stetson. Stet- Stetson. Yes. Um, and he was very productive there. And that's a D1 school, but it's kind of a shitty D1 school. But it's a D1 <laughs> school. He was pretty productive there, especially in his last season. Uh, 240 guy. He's a matchup problem like Nick Truesdale. Mm-hmm. With Landry Jones throwing him the ball, touchdown machine for sure. If you watch his highlights, he just catches a bunch of contested catches because no one can get anywhere near his hands. And the quarterback will just throw it up and be like, all right. You're just going to out-jump this guy. You don't even have to really jump off the ground. Just lift your mm-hmm. seven-foot wingspan arms up and mm-hmm. grab the ball. Yep. That's what he does. He has pretty good hands. So yes. I like him a lot because he's young, can develop. Mm-hmm. And in that offense, in that Dallas Renegades offense that we both think is going to be fantastic, Yep. why would you not think Donald Parham? 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 Eh, probably Parham. either or. Parham. Yeah. Why Probably would you not. not think he's good? He could low key be number two for me. I have him at three. You have him at five. I do have him at five because because it's un it's unproven. Uh, yeah, multiple things unproven. Um, watching his tape and stuff. Uh, he is fast. He is all of six eight, and he knows how to use his size. Uh, he's a bit of a what I call a duck foot runner. So he's right. kind of well, he's, he's kind of exactly he's six eight. So it's not necessarily <laughs> his fault. Um, <laughs> and while he is six eight, he's a very thin six eight. Uh, you're not going to put mm-hmm. him to block anybody. Um, no. and while he is a mismatch in the red zone, cause he's six fucking eight, uh, I think that they'll probably go more the route of going to Jazz Ferguson or a running play in the red zone rather than go to the tight end. Um, simply because I think in Stoops' offenses at Oklahoma, and that's what I'm going off on, uh, they kind of use the tight ends more as a, uh, not necessarily in the red zone, but more of just like a, you know, third and four second and short stuff like that so that's what i think but, but i still think he'll be good kind of player yeah different kind of player yeah so different different weapon than i, I think he's had yeah. this guy could play wide receiver exactly uh he's very thin limbed uh which is part of it which is not a bad thing because if you're putting him to block then what are you doing yeah uh, you put this guy to block. yeah you don't don't put him in a block that's just dumb um but yeah uh, I, I don't think he'll really be a uh, yards after catch guy unless he, um, <clears throat> excuse me, unless there's a lot of green grass in front of him just because I don't think he can really make dudes miss very well. He has, he's very fast. Mm-hmm. He's very speedy. He actually is very fast. Yes, but I don't think. He has think a lot he, of straight speed because he has those long Exactly, legs. exactly. So I don't think he's going to be able to make people miss. He's not really going to be able to get through a lot of contact. Uh, but yeah, I think he'll score touchdowns. So He's a decent route runner too. Yeah. For being six eight and being yeah. weirdly footed and weirdly kind footed, of, kind of giraffe like, he's like giraffe a like, good yeah. route runner. I agree. <laughs> um, other guy I want to talk about is Brandon Barnes, All right. solely because there's like one other tight end on the team. Yeah, and they don't have Rashad Ross, Rashad Ross anymore. Yep, and they don't have a ton of weapons. And on the outside, and Brandon Barnes kind of seems like that. You know, you got Nelson Spruce, but number two guy. Mm-hmm. Going to Brandon Barnes. That's why I put him up here at number two. All right. Anyone you want to talk about on yours? Uh, I would love to talk about uh, former Browns practice squad legend EJ Bibbs. 
Yeah. Uh, he is just very athletic tight end. Uh, he's basically a big old athlete playing tight end, but he can also block. He's not he's not as good of an athlete as, say, Donald Parham, um, mm-hmm. but he can move, he can block, he can kind of do it all. He's a jack of all trades. I think he'll do very, very well in that New York Gardens offense because what's becoming a trend is that tight end room is underwhelming. So I think he'll be mm-hmm. the clear-cut starter from day one, and I think he'll put up stats. Yeah, I'm concerned about the Guardians, man. Also, Kevin Gilbride is old, so they use the tight ends a lot more. <laughs> Fair enough. That was rude. That was rude to <laughs> say. Whatever. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I think we talked enough about a tight end. Not a position I'm overly invested in either. Mm-hmm. It's one of those positions I wait on a lot in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think I would here in the XFL fantasy, too. Unlike well, quarterbacks it, where I said that my it's almost uh, changes. It's almost like in the NFL, like the position's almost dying out, really. Because of what mm-hmm. in the NFL fantasy, there's like five good tight ends, and yeah, like there three. Is. Oh, only like three of those are actually like, yeah, you can definitely start them every week. So I mean, it's yeah. just, okay. it is what it is. All right, moving on to our last position group, mm-hmm. a fun one, I think. Yes. How about defenses? All right, so my number one defense is the Wildcats defense. My number two defense, Battlehawks defense. My number three defense is the Roughnecks defense. Number four, Renegades defense. And number five is the Defenders defense. Mm-hmm. You? Number one, LA Wildcats defense. Number two, St. Louis Battlehawks defense. Number three, Houston Roughnecks defense. Number four, DC Defenders defense. And number five, New York Guardians defense. Okay. So here's the. We almost are in or exact identical. agreement. Yes. This is near identical. Um, Wildcats, we know why, right? Yes. They've got. They've got. A head coach who's a defensive guy. Yes, I mean, that's just they're going to be they're going to have a good defense. They have a lot of good players. Uh, Battle Hawks they have a lot of skill and a lot of experience. Yes, for me, Roughnecks have a lot of talent. Yes, like pure talent. Yes, uh, and yeah. So it, it, the only ones that we have different are as I have the Renegades up here, whereas you have the Guardians. So yes, um, let's just talk briefly about those two teams. Oh, okay. Quick. Uh, I have the Renegades because I think they have a few really talented players on their teams. Uh, on their team, mm-hmm. I like, of course, the MVP, the future defensive MVP, Haloi Kikaha. <laughs> okay. And I just think they have a good front seven. Mm-hmm. And I'm just mainly they made my list just because I think they'll rack up a lot of sacks, and that's why I'll put them at four. That's why they're not higher, but four out of eight. It's pretty that's good. Pretty good. But that's pretty good. In that good. mid 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 range for me. All right. Uh, so the Guardians, I really the re- Guardians, yeah. I really really like their uh, linebacker room. I think it's fantastic mm-hmm. with uh, Nick DeLuca, Ben Heaney, and Frank Ginda. I think arguably those will be the best linebacking. They'll be the best linebacking room in the XFL, uh, which is good because the Guardians don't really jump off the page on really any other position group. So. Yeah, that's true. They gotta yes. they gotta have a good defense because we have been kind of shitting on them for every yes. other position group. Yes. Um, Do you have okay. any players that you would like uh, to shout out just specifically on any other defenses? Um, well, we got our friends of the show, but we do. We have Tawan friends of the Jones. show, Tawan Jones and Chris John Sicoli. Yeah, and they're both teams that we made on this list. They're big, and cool guys. We we remember Tawan Jones kept saying how like defense is this team's focus. Yes, I'm believing him there. Yes. Uh, of course, you know, we, we know the Roughnecks have some good, you know, Edmund Robinson, Coney Ely, they have a bunch of good guys, so mm-hmm. um, they just have a shit ton of talent with the Roughnecks. Yes. <sighs> Is there anyone you want to shout out? I mean, th- this one's almost cut and dry for me. Yeah. But, uh, on the Roughnecks, I believe in a former episode, uh, I talked about Latroy Lewis. I like him a lot. Gabe Bright on the Roughnecks as well. I think he, he bounced around the NFL a lot. I think he'll be very, 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 very good. Uh, Battle Hawks, Andrew Anker is going to be good. Uh, DC Defenders, I really like Sam Montgomery. Um, yeah, I think I covered it. Uh, only thing I'd like to mention with the Defenders Mm -hmm. is I think they probably have the reason they slipped onto my list at five Mm -hmm. is they probably have the best safety tandem. Yes. With Matt Elam and Raheem Moore. Yes. And so that should be a, you know, that should be good and that should prove to be, um, you know, successful. You know, just good at coverage. Yes. Whereas their their linebacking core then has Scooby Wright, who we've talked about before. Scooby Doo. So 
I just think they have a lot of talent as well. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of good defensive talent. I think yes. my biggest worry is uh, at corner with yes. the league. And the team that's probably best suited to deal with that lack of talent is the Battlehawks. They have so much depth and so much experience on the Correct. secondary. So that's mm-hmm. why they've come in at number two for me. The problem... Uh, more, why, why, why do you think corner, corner talent is such an issue in the XFL? Just because I think corner talent's an issue in the NFL. Correct. That's a good answer. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, if, if at the highest level it's it's not talented enough, I'm worried about it being an issue here. Yes, I think also if it, even if you're like decent cornerback in terms of NFL talent, you're on an NFL team, especially since most NFL teams carry anywhere from five to six, five to seven. I've seen seven corner teams as well. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it's there's there's not enough talent for the NFL, mm-hmm. so it makes me worry about when you get to the next level lower. How much talent there will, and I think there, and then on the other end, I think there's a shit ton of wide receiver talent. <laughs> yes, everywhere, <laughs> like too All much around. wide receiver talent. Yes, so, I think the same with running backs. So it's yeah, and running backs too. So we're that that's the problem here is I I think the linebackers and the front sevens are going to be pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but cornerbacks are where you're going to miss I, out. Secondary and O line, and I think is where you're going to miss out a lot. Mm-hmm, yeah, O line too. That's so, for sure. Yes. Um, Quarterback talent's pretty good, too. So Yeah. I think there's a lot of good quarterbacks. Yes. Not elite level, but good yes. quarterbacks. Yes. Do you ever, so. Did you ever find out what happened? More details about Sterling Moore? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what happened to him. All right. I, I literally can't find out anything. So he it might be like, one of those things where... This. It might be one of those things where the, the thing's wrong and he's been showing up to camp. I mean, I, I can't... Because I can't see into camp and I haven't seen any highlights. It's like, yeah, oh, it's not like or... NFL training camps where someone steps on the field and they're like, oh my fucking god. Yeah, I so. would know, but we don't know here. So it's like, we're so, we have to go off those rosters on the websites. And as far as I know, Sterling Moore is not listed. So Yes. Okay. Well, that was our fantasy rankings. Did every position. How long did our show go today? It is an oh, hour yeah. and 16. So All right. And That's I feel good. like we uh, if we went into detail about everything, we could have gone longer. So. Yeah, we. I started speeding I, up towards I, I, the end because I was like, "This thing will be like two yeah. hours if we talk about every player." <laughs> I feel like our longest shows are the ones where we get to talk about players. Yeah, so for sure. we also did have a, a half hour of news though. So I know because we had that big news drop right at the beginning. Yeah. Once once the uh, league starts, we're gonna have a shitload of news. Hey, but we're gonna have two shows a week. Maybe that's true. That's true. So we'll have more time to talk about it. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Um, I know this might have. Some people might not have found this episode helpful because not everyone plays fantasy. But, you know, it's it's more than just, you know, when you look into fantasy, you also dive deep into players and their positions on teams. So it's it's useful information for just knowing about teams. Yes. So. so um, and remember. Super interesting show, I think. And super fun. It was fun. This was a fun one because I, yeah. I love fantasy. <laughs> I, uh, so being able I, to talk about these players from a different perspective than being like, he's good. <laughs> he's good. Yeah, he's real good. And like, like, and like trying to think about usage and shit. <laughs> See, I can't escape that because even though this is a fantasy episode, I was like, yeah, you know, huh, blah, 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 and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I went a little bit deeper with my analysis in terms of you know where I thought guys would be slotted on the depth chart and shit. Yeah. So I mean, it was just fun to discuss that. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, make sure you guys go over to Twitter, you follow us there, make sure you go over to YouTube, you subscribe, you like, you watch the vlog, you comment on it, you share it with your friends, you share yes. it with your mom, you share it with your dad. We have more videos coming, just, they're, they're, we do. they're coming. <laughs> they are yeah, under we're construction. Soon. Yes. We, we're, we're, we're coming up with ideas, we're writing scripts, we're mm-hmm. figuring out how the fuck we're going to edit these things, mm-hmm. and how we're going to put them out, and how we should be putting them out, because we don't know if we... We have a ton of ideas, but we yes. need to be able to space them out or we're going to run out of ideas real quick. Yes. So we need to space them out and release them a little at a time. And we want to make sure they're as good as they can be before we show them to you guys. So, um, But anyway, thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. Peace out, Girl so Scout. Close. See you. So close. So close. This is episode 12, so we've done three months. Oh, that's that's cool. crazy. Um, but make sure... I, I, we talked about this before. 
but I do want to try to live stream that first game if we can figure out how to do that. We don't yes. have much time to figure that out, but I'm going to figure not. it out. Yes. I'm going to figure it out. But anyway, thanks so much, guys. I've said that three times now. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, guys. Bye, Bye-bye.